Alright, so it's currently 5.40am where I am, and I should really be in bed by now, as I've been awake way too long. But I know a lot of you guys are going to be really looking forward to seeing the raw video from me, so I decided, screw it. I'm going to go ahead and make the video right now. So, unfortunately, this does, this does obviously mean that the editing on this video is basically non-existent, so hopefully you guys don't mind that too much. You're just going to enjoy the video all the same, but yeah, if it's going to be slightly lower quality in terms of editing, but of course, the video came out a lot quicker than normal, so... There's that. So let's just jump into this deck list anyway. So thankfully, Ra turned out to be a hell of a lot easier to build than I thought it would be. I came into this video thinking that Ra would turn out to be very similar to how it is in Master Duel and previous iterations of it in Duel Links, where it's just a not a very functional deck list unless you pair it with a whole bunch of other stuff, and the pure variants have always sucked. Turns out the pure variant for this game is just pretty decent. It's not fantastic by any means. It has some very significant weaknesses. The main ones I notice at the moment is DD Crow, obviously, but DD Crow is like, on ladder, you don't see it all too often. In tournament play, it'll be a pain in the ass, but on ladder, you don't see it too often. And the other main downside is, of course, both of your main searches, your main core, your main core components, are continuous spells. So if your opponent has a set Cosmic Cyclone or a set MST, yeah, that's gonna screw up the game a hell- <laughs> just screw up the game completely. As it's, This deck list is basically a two card combo between these two cards to end up going through your full combo and ending on a big gigantic Ra, or ending on of course your Sphere Mode for turn one, which ends up going into your big Ra's on the following turns, which of course turns into your big Phoenix as well. Alright, so before we get into the actual deck list, just a reminder, if you're enjoying this kind of content or see more deck lists or more videos from me in the future, please remember to leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to the channel down below. I have a whole bunch of videos planned around the latest box, your Mayakashis, your Shadows, all these, all the new stuff, maybe even trying out Magical Musket, of course, yeah, trying out the Constella stuff, so if you want to see any of those videos, remember to like, remember to subscribe, and yeah, let's jump into this list. Alright, so we've got a bunch of new cards to go through first, starting off with the brand new boss monster for the deck, the Winged Dragon of Ra, Immortal Phoenix. Alright, this card cannot be normal summon to set, but it's special summon by its own effect, and cannot be special summon by other ways. This is very important to note, as it means if your opponent has an IDP, they can't actually summon this from your graveyard to banish your Ra or anything, because it just cannot be used. You can, your opponent cannot special summon this thing. Alright, if the Winged Dragon of Ra is sent from your field to your graveyard while this card's in the graveyard, summon this card to the field. So if you ever lose your Ra, this thing will come back to the field. Alright, cards and effects cannot be activated in response to this activation. This card is unaffected by other card effects. 4,000 attack, unaffected by other card effects. Very scary in a 4,000 life point game. You can pay 1,000 life points, send one monster on the field to the graveyard. No once per turn written there anywhere. This thing can remove your opponent's entire field as long as you have the life points for it. Once per turn during the end phase, send this card to the graveyard. If you do, summon out a Winged Dragon of Ra Sphere mode from your hand, deck, or graveyard, ignoring its summoning conditions. So you still want to try to get this thing out on turn 1, even going first, because it will turn into an egg, and this egg on your field is an untargetable monster that your opponent cannot even attack into, and it's really goddamn annoying. I think most of you guys have probably seen the Sphere mode before, so I don't want to go through it too much. Basically, it's a monster your opponent can't target, your opponent cannot attack into, and during your turn, you can activate it to send it to your... Uh, graveyard to summon out a Ra from your deck with 4,000 attack. Alright, and of course it also has the other effect of you can, it cannot be special summoned, but it requires three tributes from either side of the field to normal summon it. So you can tr tribute summon it to the field by tributing three of your opponent's monsters. That won't come up too much in this particular deck list, or even this particular game, but in general it does come up sometimes, and you'll see it in at least one of the replays. Alright, then we have your Millennium Revelation, or your Revelation, sorry. You can send one Divine Beast type monster from your hand to the graveyard, add one Monster Reborn from your deck or graveyard to your hand. You can send this face up card to the graveyard. This turn, you can special summon the Winged Dragon of Ra from your graveyard with Monster Reborn, ignoring its summoning conditions. So this card can search for Monster Reborn, and it can allow you to summon out your Winged Dragon of Ra using the Monster Reborn. Because normally, obviously, Ra says cannot be summoned or cannot be special summoned or whatever else, so it gets around that. Alright, during the end phase of this turn, the effect is activated, you must send the Winged Dragon of Ra in control to the graveyard. Or the one you have summoned must spawn to the graveyard. Alright. And then finally, oh sorry, we have two cards left. We have the True Sun God. When this card is activated, add one Winged Drain of Ra or one card that mentions it from your deck to your hand, except the True Sun God. Monsters except the Winged Drain of Ra cannot attack the turn they are special summoned. Very important, as on ladder specifically, 
people are not going to read this or have any idea what this thing does. This thing is a pseudo sort of floodgate where your opponent can't actually attack on the turn they summon their monsters and it comes up a lot. Once per turn, during your main phase, you can send this card from your field or the Winged Dragon of Ra, the Mortal Phoenix, from your deck to the graveyard, then send one Winged Dragon of Ra from your monster zone to the graveyard. So this thing, you can search for a Ra card, and of course you can send your Ra to the graveyard, send your Mortal Phoenix to the graveyard, which of course sending the Ra to the graveyard will trigger the Phoenix, summon the Phoenix to the field, and then you have a 4000 attack, Un monsters cannot be affected by anything, they can wipe your opponent's entire field, and just beat them to death. So, you'll see that a lot in the gameplay, most of the time you're just comboing these two cards together, and that's the whole goal of the decklist. And the final card in the decklist is Dark Spell Regeneration. This card is fantastic to get in the graveyard, especially on your first turn. When a opponent's monster declares an attack, target one spell in your opponent's graveyard, set it to your field. You can basically ignore that first effect, you'll never come up as you're always putting this thing in the graveyard. You banish this card from your graveyard and send one monster reborn from your hand or set on your field to the graveyard, spit or summon one winged dragon of Ra from your graveyard, ignoring summoning conditions, then you can send one monster your opponent controls to the graveyard. Also send that spit or summon monster to the graveyard during the end phase. So essentially this thing allows you to do your monster reborn summon just during your opponent's turn, and it can send one of your opponent's cards to the graveyard. So it's a little bit of disruption, you'll see it during the gameplay, it does come up, and you'll put this in the graveyard via your skill going first, if you are able to. Alright, and the rest of the decklist is literally just Backer Removal and Book of Moon. The reason for this is, like I said earlier, these two cards have a major downside of being continuous, so your opponent has a single set MST, a single set Cosmic, you're going to lose the game instantly. Also, cards like Crackdown are really annoying, so your opponent just yoinks a copy of your Winged Dragon of Ra when you summon it, you can't do anything about that, so having ways to just deal with back row is fantastic, and yeah, that's basically it. The Book of Moon is also great to just deal with a lot of really annoying cards, like the latest Constella card, where your opponent will have a thing on the field that can just bounce your monsters to hand is really annoying, so Book of Moon, turn that thing face down, you're good to go. Also good against things like Winder as well, so. And finally, the last thing to go through is the skill. Alright, Immortal Sun God. You can only spit or summon the Winged Dragon of Ra and monsters containing that card name during duels where this skill is used. So keep that in mind, as that means you can't use IDP. Each of the following effects can be used once per duel. Send the Winged Dragon of Ra or a card containing that name from your hand to the graveyard and either add the Winged Dragon of Ra or a card containing that name or a monster reborn from your deck to your hand or send it to the graveyard. So very good at searching for any of your main Ra cards and it can even send your trap card to your graveyard as well. Alright, uh, where was I? And the second part of the skill is pretty simple, add one monster reborn from your graveyard to your hand, if you have the Winged Dragon of Ra or a Divine Beast type monster, then name on the field. Banish, e banish any Winged Dragon of Ra sphere mode on your field that was not special summoned during the tur this turn at the end of your turn. Honestly, this last, this last part, I don't think I've had this ever come up ever, so don't even worry about it. Alright, let's get into the actual gameplay now. And since I'm recording this in one take, I'm going to have to go manually over to there. So I hope you guys don't mind the uh, lack of editing for this video in terms of just trying to get it out quicker than normal. I hope you guys do uh, appreciate it all the same. Alright, let's get into these replays. And these were some banger replays. Unfortunately though, a lot of these replays were of course Kia games in its late months, so uh, they're not exactly the most high quality gameplays around, but I did try to grab a few decent ones at least. I know I beat up a 10 player in there and a Cosmo player, so yeah, let's get into it. Alright. Yeah, this necklace is weird. I don't think it'll do too well in tournaments, because in tournaments with side decks, you're just going to lose to DD Crow instantly, lose to MSTs, Cosmics, all that kind of stuff. But on ladder specifically, no one knows what it does, and no one's trying to counter Ra of all things, so it just it just farms. So it might be a good KC Cup deck too. All right, this guy's playing Cosmo. Gonna be shuffling his stuff back in, adding some cards. You'll be seeing a Cosmo video from me too, by the way. This deck is really fun to play. I right, am seeing the one back row. Pretty good back row to hit actually. All right. Gonna be searching, of course, for a card to then discard. So we searched for the Ra, so they could discard it with the Revelation. Searching for the Monster Reborn. Mortal Sun God. Sending the Phoenix to the Graveyard. I actually didn't need to do that, because this card itself could send the Phoenix to the Graveyard. But in this case, it really doesn't particularly matter. Monster Reborn, reviving the Ra. Yeah, I didn't need to do that. I could have sent the, um, 
to like track card to the graveyard or something. Holy rare animation. BB. Alright, more of summon card to add the monster reborn back to hand. Animating Ra's effect. This is completely fine because obviously we don't particularly care about the Cosmo Dora negating it, because negating it just means I summon back the Phoenix from the graveyard. Pay now thousand life points, Ruby's monster, dome him. I can't remember if there's a different animation between both the um, card arts. I think we'll see them both in this video. So. Alright. Command of the Doom King. So up against a DDD player. Tree Sun God, searching for my Ra. I tell you my Millennium Revelation. I tell you my skill discarding. Now, I, when you open hands with Monster Reborn in your opening hand, be very careful because this card won't be able to discard something to search for your uh, Monster Reborn if it's in your hand already. So the only way to discard a Ra to put it in the graveyard is via your skill. So keep that in mind, it'll make your opening hands feel really weird. So you notice I wasn't able to put this thing in the graveyard because, well, I had to discard Ra specifically. So keep that in mind, if you open this card, your hands become quite a bit worse and a little bit more awkward. And you have to play a little bit differently. Alright. Summoning out my Ra once again. I should release those for the other card art. I think the other card art's way better. Though I do own this card art IRL, so... Alright, Mortal Sun Girl, grabbing the monster reborn back. Setting this card, setting my Ra to the graveyard, summoning the Phoenix. Phoenix goes to grave, summons the egg, and passes the turn. Alright. Dark contract with the gate, searching his Armageddon. Going to be ortho seeing to pop my back row, which is rather nice of him, because we want this card in the graveyard. So we have Monster Reborn back in our hand, thanks to the skill, meaning the trap card is active. Opponent's going to summon out the T-Pose himself. And then he's going to summon out a Dingirsu, which is actually one of the few outs to this card. This thing is obviously not targetable. Dingirsu does out it. But it's fine, we have the trap card and grave. So as soon as he goes to battle phase, activate this, summon the thing, remove his monster, and he can't even do any damage to me at all. Phoenix gets returned, swaps out for the egg, because the egg can be summoned from the graveyard, by the way. Stopping it out for the Ra, 4,000 attack, hit him in the face for 4k. Could also use my Ra's effect to pop itself to summon out the um, Phoenix if I was scared of like a Sphere Karibo or something, which is technically would be better, but I don't really care enough, I'm just going to hit him in the face. <laughs> Alright, on to replay number 3. And this must be the 10 new play, because I think the last two are Blue Eyes players. And this was a fairly bricky hand, this one. Well, sort of bricky. So, this hand was incredibly awkward, because you'll notice I have a Sphere Mode in hand, and I have the True Sun God. This hand, there's no way to play it out where I wouldn't have to discard the Sphere Mode, and then I can't really play my turn one anyway. So, going second, discarding Sphere, mo sphere Mode is okay. Going first, you kind of want that thing, so I couldn't really play out this hand properly, so instead I just have to set Book of Moons and call it a day. At least I don't think I could have played out this hand in any way that would have worked properly. I'm going to Book of Moon both these monsters he summons, so he can't go into the Link 1, hopefully. Unfortunately, he has a third one, but hopefully at this point he won't be able to kill me. <laughs> Goes for a Tenyi, Tenyi discard, summon back. And I was going to go for the Link 3. But that's completely fine. I will survive the attack. Alright. Now my turn, tributing all three of his monsters to summon out the Winged Dragon of Ra, Spear Mode. True Sun God searching for my Ra. Revelation going Monster Reborn. Monster Reborn can then revive it. Oh, it does have the same animation. It's a way better card art though. Alright. 
Going back to the monster reborn. True Sun God sending the Phoenix. Sending my own monster. And because this thing is actually unaffected, it can swing into this. Despite this thing normally not being able to be swung into. I shouldn't have used the monster reborn there by the way, just sort of used it by habit. This thing would have had zero attack, so should have kept monster reborn in hand, that was a mistake. Not that it particularly matters. Fanny passes his turn back. Phoenix swaps over, or egg swaps over. 4,000 attack, raw. Swap it over for a Phoenix, because why not? Fanny concedes before we get to. Alright, now to bully some Blue Eyes players. And this replay, you guys are going to enjoy a lot. This is my favourite replay of the bunch. Up against... Chaos Max. Alright. 30 card Chaos Max. So, Tree Gun God searching for Re Revelation. Revelation discarding the Ra. Seeing the trap card via the skill. Monster Reborn revive back. Ra does have a pretty good animation in this game. Alright, going back to the Monster Reborn so the trap is active, seeing the Phoenix, swapping him over, Phoenix come back, swap over, egg come out. Now my opponent needs to find a way to out this egg. Alright, so here I probably should have, I, I had to use the trap card here if I wanted to use it at all, because obviously it goes into the Synchro, Synchro negates graveyard effects, so I wanted to use the trap card here. Probably should have got rid of the tuner in hindsight, I think it was probably more important, but... It's whatever. And here my point, even with a 30 card deck, I actually was able to go into a Chaos Max, which is very scary, because if he was able to out this thing, he would have been able to piercing me for a billion damage by hitting my Wing Dragon of Ra. So maybe I shouldn't have used the Trap card at all. But it's fine, because it looks like this guy doesn't actually know what this card does. And unfortunately that means he summons a 5,000 attack Chaos Max, goes to battle phase, and realizes, oh, I might have fucked up a bit. Yeah, summons the max, tried to go to battle phase, I believe, with 5,000 attack, and just has to end phase. Phoenix comes back, Phoenix goes to grave. My turn, swap it over. Bring out the Ra. Ra gets this thing off the field. Then swap over the Ra using the True Sun God. An Immortal Phoenix is non-target removal, just sends these cards to the graveyard, get him out of here. 4,000 attack, unaffected, straight to the dome. Alright, and you're, by the way, this card, um, it can't even be responded to, so even if my opponent had the Synchro card on the graveyard, it can't actually respond to this thing reviving. Plus the thing's unaffected by stuff too, so that probably also stops it as well. Yeah, this decklist is way better than I thought it would be. It's not, I don't think it'll be a tournament topping decklist. It might do okay in KC Cups, there's no side deck, but side decking would kill this decklist completely. It's one of those decks where I, I feel like uh, side decking doesn't belong in a, especially in Duel Links tournament play where there just isn't that many cards in your deck. I don't know, feels a bit odd. Alright, it's so up against a, another Blue Eyes player. He's going to be summoning out his alternative. Summoning out his tuner, gets a search, grabbing his Stone of Ancients. He's become a Blue Eye Spirit Dragon. Alright, Mortal Sun God discarding, getting my rev revelation. Monster Reborn reviving. Yeah, by the way, you'll notice with this turn, it was one of those awkward hands where I opened Monster Reborn, so it looks kind of weird the way I did it. Essentially, I just wanted to get, I just need to get Ra on the field. Because if I can get Ra on the field, which is very easy to do, just have Monster Reborn and send this thing to Grave and use the skill to put Ra on Grave, then I can use Ra to remove himself. And because I've already put this guy in the Grave earlier, he can summon himself, and my opponent already knew he was going to get non-target removal, and he just concedes. Alright guys, that's going to do it for today's replays. Hope you guys enjoyed them. Remember, if you want to see the Shadol videos, or the 
uh, Mayakashi videos or all those other Constellas and whatever other videos I had planned. I'm trying to see them on the uh, my old monitor here. The Sioux ship stuff, the musket stuff, the uh, Machina stuff, all that kind of shit. If you want to see any of those videos, remember to subscribe so you don't miss out. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. Laters.